Hello and welcome to Esri Australia's screen share video tutorial on how to import and style your data according to your goals and needs. Now in a previous video you may recall having cleaned your data and if you still have that cleaned data set feel free to use it alongside this video tutorial. Alternatively if you do not have a cleaned data set ready to go you can access this training, adding and styling layers data set from our website in close proximity to the link that you opened for this video. Now, once you've saved that data file to either your computer or your desktop, head back to ArcGIS Online, open a new map if necessary, and go to the add tool and add layer from file. You wanna choose file, search for that data set, that spreadsheet, and open it into ArcGIS Online. Now before we hit import layer, notice that our data set is a CSV file, which is one of the four file types that ArcGIS Online accepts. So we're good to continue. I'm going to hit import layer and a new pop-up box comes up asking us to select the columns in our original data, data set where our locational data exists. It needs us to specify this so that it can map our data to the map. And we're not going to use coordinates, we're going to use addresses or places. And we're not working within Australia because our data set quite clearly is in Africa. So we're going to click on this drop down and you'll notice that there is no African option, but there is a world option. So we're going to press W on the keyboard and that'll take us down to W and we're going to select world. Now before we hit add layer, we need to specify, well, what column, what data uh, column has that uh, locational feature? And it's our African country data column. And it helps if your data columns, your column headers are appropriately titled so that you can easily identify those. So I'm going to click on not used and I'm going to select the address or place that best fits. And in this case, it's country. And I'm going to click add layer. And you'll notice that there's a warning that not all features were added to the map. Two addresses in the file could not be located. If that's a problem with your actual spreadsheet, you might wish to go back and look for any errors that might exist in that country's uh, column. However, because this is a training uh, video, we're going to hit OK and we're going to move on. And you'll see that automatically our data begins to populate the map as big or little orange circles. And that this change style tab out to the side, this panel, uh, allows us to make changes to the way this looks and feels. For instance, at the moment, the attribute from our data that it's showing on the map is the total cases of malaria. If I wish to change that to show population, I could click on the drop down and click what I want to show. And you can see that that data changes in real time on the map. I'm going to stay with total cases. So I'm going to reselect that, give it time to load and make the change. And then I'm going to go down to step two, select a drawing style. And I like this counts and amounts sizes uh, style. So I'm going to stick with it because I like how my data is being displayed according to how many cases each country has of malaria. So I'm going to stick with this one and I'm going to click options. And this brings up a new panel that allows us to make some changes to these current class sizes. And I'm going to scroll down and click classify data. And it allows you four different ways to classify your data. If I scroll down a little bit, natural breaks, equal interval, quantile, or manual breaks, where you can select your own. I'm going to stay with natural breaks, but I want more than four classes as visible here. So I'm going to up that to six classes so that there are more sizes available to me on the map as a viewer. And I'm going to scroll back up and orange is my favorite color. And I find it a little bit hard to distinguish between some of the sizes, so I'm going to make these different colors too. And I'm going to click on legend. And I can change each of these colors one at a time by clicking on the big circle. And if I want to, I could change the symbol type, but I'm simply going to change the fill. And starting from a deep dark color, 
I'm going to progressively get lighter with my color choices. And this can sometimes be a bit of trial and error, and that's okay. Sometimes the colors don't appear as you think they are going to on the map, and you might need to make some adjustments, and that's all right. And as you can see, my data now goes from a deep dark maroon gradually through to a yellow. And you might be going, well, hang on, that yellow is not super visible on the map. And that's when you might make a change to that particular color by going back and clicking on it. I'm going to leave it as, as it is because I'm going to show you another way that I can get around that a bit later. Now that I'm happy with the way my data is looking, I've styled it a little bit, I need to hit OK to lock that in and then click Done to finalize it. If I click out of this that particular change style panel that was up just before, without hitting OK and Done, it's going to revert back to what it previously was displaying, those orange circles. If I accidentally get out of that change style panel, I can access it at any time by hovering over that feature layer and clicking on this Shapes icon, which is the Change Style icon and it brings it back up where I can re-edit it and make some changes again. But I'm going to hit cancel for now. Now, I mentioned that the yellows were a little bit washed out on this map. That's all right because instead of changing the color of the yellow, I actually want to make a change to the base map by selecting a dark gray canvas. And by doing that, now all of a sudden I can see those yellows really clearly. So there's another way to work with both the base map and the change style options to get the desired uh, outcome that you're looking for. Now, let's say I wanted to use this data, this data set again, but to show population instead of total cases. Do you need to add it again in through here? No, you could go that way, but we can actually go to this more options ellipsis click on it and click the copy option. And you'll notice that it creates a second option with the copy next to it that is completely identical to the first option. Now, before we progress further, it might be a good time to rename your, your uh, map layer, your feature layer, to a more suitable title showing what it displays. In this case, total cases of malaria and then hit OK. And that helps us distinguish between our original one and the copy data set. And this time, I'm going to go through the same process, but I'm going to do it for population. So I might rename this one now and call it uh, 2017 population by African country and hit OK and I want to change the style of it. So at the moment it's showing malaria. I need to change that. So the first job is to choose the attribute I want to show. Because I'm measuring population this time, I need to change that to population. Allowing it to load again. And once it loads again, you can see that I need to make those changes to the way my data looks and feels. So I can click on options again. I could change my data by classifying it in different ways. I'm going to leave that unchecked this time. And I'm, oh, actually I might check it because then I can make some more changes to it. I'm gonna up the ante with five classes again and click on legend and again, go through that process of making changes to the way my data looks and feels. Let's go with a purpley pink version this time. Again, getting progressively lighter as we work through the colors. And it may be a little bit of trial and error again to get it right. But again, play around with that until it suits your needs, suits uh, what you're wanting to show. Again, making sure to lock it in, we need to click OK and then click Done. And that is one way that we can add uh, our data in and style it so that it begins to take on meaning uh, and a bit of shape to our viewers and our audience that might be looking at our data on this map. Again, we can go to our legend to bring up additional information about what each of these colors means. 
Alternatively, I can also click on each circle to bring up information about that country's malaria cases and population. I can cross that off, and I'd like you to rem to I'd like to remind you, sorry, of that print function and print print map with legend. If I was doing an assessment piece and I needed to include this in my Word document, I could print that map with legend, allowing it to load. And if I have a snipping tool on my uh, computer, I can click new and I could snip that image out and paste it into a Word document so that it supports uh, perhaps my analyses of my findings. I'm not going to save that for today, but again, a really useful reminder of that tool, Map with Legend. All right, that brings us to an end of this particular video tutorial in which you learned how to import your data and style it so that it takes on additional meaning for your viewers. Thank you.